I'll start off with uh, my narrative about India. You know, today when we talk about India, we talk about uh, whenever we are talking about India, we are also talking about the China in the same breath in terms of uh, you know the, even the next superpower. And if you look at the numbers, if numbers are defining India, if you look at the population, we are going to exceed China by 2034. And if it is military strength, we are the, we are the fourth largest army. If it is economy, we are we are almost third in purchasing power parity term and we continue to grow. But is that all what India stands for? I believe there's a lot more to that and a lot more I mean there's power of example, the ability, things that are allied to a lot of things that India stands for. In the past 20 years, uh, while India was progressing, you know I come from Jammu and Kashmir, uh, we in some ways Kashmir has been a part of the growth story of India and at times it has not been a part of the growth story of India. When I was growing up, uh, that time in 90s, terrorism was at its peak and a lot of people like me who were growing up, the only hope for them was to, you know, to, uh, to do good academically and finally try to find a good job and leave that place forever. And I exactly did that. Any, anyone that time knew me is that this guy will leave Jammu and Kashmir and never ever come back and I almost had a pledge that time that I'll never come back. And I was slightly above average academically and um, I managed to get a job and it was later I realized that the only thing that I had with me was that while you, as you're a Kashmiri, you know, you were growing up solving problems every day and later I realized the company which gave me a job, they were literally looking for problem solvers and that was almost in my blood because every young guy that time was growing up solving problems and there were problems of so many different varieties that that came natural to all of us. I did well. I I people say that I was a hacker, but I was actually in love with technology, and I I did well as a as a technology expert. I wanted to cross the line always, and I, that is what defined my career also. And I got fortunate to work with a lot of good people around the world. And I had left Jammu and Kashmir. And next slide. I was a hacker. You know, I was I was very good with numbers. I wanted to look at life and everything in black and white, you know, zeros and one as, as one would define. And in my in my corporate career, I I realized that, you know, I had the ability to, you know, quantify everything into black and white, yes and no's and move on. And I was doing very well. And because I was a hacker, uh, I could negotiate a lot of luxuries in my life. And, you know, it was so bad because if you engage somebody to, you know, build the locks of your house you would not treat that by, guy bad and that gave me the opportunity to always negotiate luxury in my life and I was doing very well and it became so bad that at times you know we used to call back home and ask what was cooked and if what was cooked we did not like that we used to call immediately the next airline which was flying to Las Vegas and we took the flights me and my colleagues just took the flights because the food cooked at home was not good and we just wanted to take that flight for the for the food that was served and the flight was really tasty. It was that bad. Uh, but then in 2012 there was something something that happened and in 2012 the, you know I read the news I was scrolling to one of my um, news apps and I, I read that there was a news which said 25,000 Pashmina goods had died of starvation and they had sta you know the, there was excessive snow. Every year there's a there's a region in Ladakh called Changtham Every year the snow is about 3 to 4 centimeters and that year it was 118 centimeters and the goats had died of starvation. I read the news like anyone else but I felt something and even when today people ask me why are you doing what are you, I do not have a straight answer to why I am doing what I am doing but maybe as a child I played with the goats. And it was that moment I felt that I will leave everything and just go. That time you know because I had spent all my life outside of Jammu and Kashmir I did not know anyone. And the, you know, I was not the chief minister or the prime minister of any sort. I did not have power. The only thing that was in my hand was just to leave everything and go to these guys. I started living with them. Uh, I became a nomad. It took me three months to travel from mountains to mountains. I crossed Dras, Changthang and re reached. Uh, and in three months of travel with the nomads, you know, it was also a spiritual journey for me. 
and I realized the best lessons that I received uh, were from the nomads and these are the lessons which stayed in I have actually uh, addressed a lot of my arrogance in my past life people have been talking about you know, not being arrogant <laughs> and I want to share the lessons which I which I got from these nomads and which I believe are the lessons for the problems of a lot of things that are happening in the 21st century. First lesson, shared excess baggage. You know, as a nomad, as a shepherd, uh, the only thing one that the shepherd has is a staff and a blanket. The staff is a little support and maybe the blanket is uh, something of the universe. Uh, if we have to solve any problem in society, you know, if we have to say, if we have to understand, is the society happy or is it sad? The society is not talking to us. The only thing that we are doing today is constantly generating data. You know, you go to Google and if you pick, pick up the, the data from Google Trends, you will find that there is, there is numbers and these numbers are creating a pattern and that pattern is creating a geometry. And that geometry creates a picture. And many times the picture that is created is something contradicting to what we see normally. And for example, if, there, if people in Dehradun go to Google and search for paracetamol in the month of November. Now you will see that people are searching for paracetamol in December. There are two ways to look at it. One is the entrepreneurial side where you will look at November being the best month and say, all right, I will start selling paracetamol in the month of November. The other side is the social side where you will try to dig what is it related to and where the problem is coming to. Maybe it is some excessive traffic jam somewhere in November. That is causing the headache and that is why people are searching for Paris more. So there are various links and correlations that you can try to... And there are two sides. One is the entrepreneurial side and the other is the, is the social side. And when you... You know, the genius of the last century, Albert Einstein, when he was asked about his opinion about God and the universe, and he refuted the presence of any godly God anywhere, but he said, it is not about God, it is about that godliness. And we have to understand a lot of things and we have to shed excess baggage. I was carrying a lot of excess baggage in my corporate life, in my previous life. And what I learned from these nomads was that one has to be light. If you want to bring in light anywhere, you have to be light yourself. That is the first lesson. I have been with the goats. I've been counting the goats day and night, down to dusk. I think for, for the shepherd, every goat is important. Today we do spot analysis in the MBA program. I think this is where it comes from. Uh, Velfredo Pareto was an Italian economist. In 1906, he observed that, you know, there's a relation between the behavior that we have. He was trying to quantify uh, the behavior, a lot of things. And he said, 20, 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% 20 20 of the population. Uh, he went back to his kitchen garden, he found that 80% of the peas come from 20% of the pea pods and 80% of the clients come from 20% of the uh, business comes from 20% 20, uh, 20 of the clients. So this relation between uh, a lot of things which cannot be quantified, he tried to put that, that why are we behaving in a certain way? I think it comes from some rules and there are some universal laws. I believe that, you know, there's a concept called extreme reversion. You know, what happens at the end of war, prolonged spells of peace. I was talking about this concept sometime back with somebody. I said the probability of falling in love with somebody you hate is always high. The only condition is that you have to hate in extreme. And that will take you to, you know, that will change a lot of things. And this is what happened in Kashmir also. You know, we had terrorism for 20 years and suddenly in the last 5 years, we have been having bumper tourist season. You know, it's to go to Kashmir is far more expensive than going to Hong Kong. Uh, Second lesson, count your sheep. And this is what a shepherd knows to count your blessings. Third lesson, seek greener pastures. You know, divergence is a reality, you know, the disagreement. We, we are designed in such a manner that we have to disagree. I disagreed with a lot of my colleagues in my previous corporate career. And I disagree with a lot of things that are happening as a social activist, as a Pashmina activist. I disagree with a lot of things and policies and all of that. But divergence is a reality and it is a common theme that binds a lot of things, you know, stars to sub subatomic strata, society to stock markets, everything is linked through that divergence, that disagreement. And new age quantum findings in advanced physics are also pointing in a very interesting space that what the output of an experiment is controlled by the state of mind of the experimenter. It is not by the content, but the state of mind of the experimenter controls the output. So when you seek, so I, I have realized that 
uh, as individuals, we have the liberty to seek greener pastures. And when you seek, you travel. And when you travel, you know, there are two types of journey. One is the internal journey that takes you into your soul. The other is that takes you through this world or both. And it is that journey that defines your life. And it is these nomads and shepherds who've, who've actually shown me a different world. And I've gone to places which I never saw in my state uh, as I was growing up. It's only in the five, six, past five, six years I've visited my places which I didn't know even existed. Face the wolves. You know, we have an ostr ostrich approach that the problem that is created by my grandfather, why should I solve that problem? Let me look at my own problems. Or there's another approach that let me look at trying to solve problems that my grandfather's generation created and let my children solve the problems that I will create and leave behind in this world. So there are two ways how this whole thing can be defined. So facing the wolves is facing your demons. So when a shepherd, when you know, I was traveling as a shepherd with these, uh, uh, with these guys, you know, a shepherd knows that, you know, stopping the, the flock is not the best way. And, and if the wolves are attacking, they're attacking you at an altitude and they attack you only to prepare you and for the shepherd to stop the flock is not the most ideal thing because it is the, it is the cycle of life. So in wisdom traditions, yin, yang, you know, opposites were defining. So this is me with one of my friends and we are defining each other. I was trying to learn a lot of things from them and that is what I have learned. So we have to appreciate the opposites, the positive and negative in science, ones and zeros in, in, in computer science. And yin and yang in wisdom traditions, these are what are defining all of us. This is me learning with them. Uh, and these, these are not simple things. These might look very simple pictures, but these are the pictures which have changed me. I work with these communities in the higher Himalayas where I am working to consolidate a lot of things that these communities are doing and trying to understand. I have understood the pains that they are under. I am trying to fight battles of uh, fake Pashmina that is coming into India. And, um, and then there are many layers to the problem. The entire eco uh, system has a lot of problems. Uh, another lesson is leave the pasture. If the party cannot go on forever. I think this is what I did with my corporate career also. That you know when, you're, when, you, when you grow up and you're doing well in your life, a lot of things happen. And one of them is that you become biased to your own ideas. You become arrogant. And I think that is where the real downfall begins. And I think that is what the lesson we get from the shepherds is that you have to understand that you have to leave the pasture for some time for the pasture to grow back. Uh, there was something called tragedy of commons done, uh, you know, the paper written by Eleanor Ostrom, where she said that if everyone looks at, you know, uh, grazing the cows in a common pasture soon, everyone will start amassing a lot of goats and uh, cows and feed their own uh, loved ones. But what will happen to the common pasture is that it will, it will vanish and it will force everyone to migrate. So what we have to understand is that we have to look at the commons also and the, com the lot of pressure that the commons are facing, the air that we eat, that we take in, the water, they are the things which are facing the crisis of the world today. And Pashmina is one subject where everyone is trying to sell Pashmina, make money out of it. And what has happened is that 95% of Pashmina being sold in Jammu Kashmir or in India is fake. Uh, Herbert Simon, father of artificial intelligence, he said that if there is you know, no mountain too high, this is what, you know, we have, everyone is climbing a mountain in their own lives with different altitudes. But Herbert Simon says that every complex problem has smaller, smaller, can be broken down into smaller uh, components which are further have their own, you know, structuring and they're, they're placed in hierarchy. If you try to decode a small component of a complex problem, you'll be able to solve a big problem. And this is what we learn from these shepherds, no mountain too high. Uh, as I was a techie and I could not, I could not uh, stay away from, you know, doing something technical. So what I did in the past six years, I've discovered a new form of art and I'm using art to sensitize a lot of people about the Pashmina ecosystem of India. So I have been doing, um, portraitures of celebrities from around the world. I use uh, a new form of art where I, uh, I take the um, hair of the Pashmina goat and vegetable dyes. I do portraitures and these, are, um, these have become the centerpiece for me to invite a lot of people to talk about Pashmina 
um, and the problems that the ecosystem is facing. Uh, these are some of the, so I've done some portraits of, uh, which have been very popular globally. Um, uh, this is one of my paintings. I'll just briefly explain one of the wing. You see a butterfly, but you also see a, the other uh, uh, wing is the world map. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that we all are connected. There's a butterfly effect. You know, you don't have to be an army to bring in big change around the world. A butterfly flood, it's a known fact, a butterfly flutters a wing in one part of the world and it causes a cyclone in the other. So we are all connected. So even if you're alone, you can really bring in a big change in the region. Lalishwari was a mystic and she said, the way is difficult and very intricate. Truth never comes to anyone from reading words. So in my six years, I have I have gone through the pain. I've had very nice experiences of being attacked from snow leopards and bears living with them. And I think that has opened me to a new chapter. And now I live with them and trying to change the life of a lot of people who are in this ecosystem. And I believe uh, a big spiritual revolution around the world can happen if animals can be happy as humans and children. And that is because the center of the project that I do is called Pashmina Goat Project. And I've, I'm working on making the Pashmina Goats happy. And these are the goats. And I believe that um, the lessons that these shepherds have given me um, have helped me understand the world in a, better, in a better way. And also aligned me spiritually. I did not know that, you know, coming from Silicon Valley and being in the mountains for six years, how will that open me? And, um, and what I've learned is that there's a universe which is always conspiring. People talk about the universe and I've now I believe that the things which I did not believe some time back, I believe in them and things which were bigger for me in my past life, if I divide my life into two, are small now and the smaller things then are big for me now. Um, and I dedicate my life to my heroes who actually helped me um, understand my own self in a better way. And what I'm trying to do is look at ways to figure out, uh, to solve problems of a community which is 1 million strong. There are issues of climate change in Himalayas and there are people who are struggling to, uh, you know, to make the ends meet. And because Himalayas is a terrain where slight change in climate, you can really see a huge impact. So I live with them and the community is about 1 million strong. So I dedicate my work and my life to these guys, weavers, craftsmen, the goats who are the center of the Pashmina ecosystem of India.